Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Josh and you're watching Our History. Today we're going over the life of the Kosa chief Ngolombane Sandile. So if you enjoy this, please be sure to like and if you're new here, consider smashing that subscribe button. If this isn't your first rodeo and you haven't shown some love to that subscribe button, now is your opportunity. Thank you for watching. Ngolombane Sandile Ngolombane Sandile who lived from 1820 to 1878, was an influential ruler of the right-hand house of the Tlosa kingdom. His leadership skills were evident in the Tlosa British Wars, where his forces, armed with modern firearms, successfully dealt losses to the British. Sandile was captured during the War of the Axe in 1847, but upon his release, he was granted land in the British Kafraria for his people. He later supported his cousin brother, Sarhili Kreli, in a war against the Cape Colony and the Fingo tribe. Tragically, Sandile lost his life in 1878 during a shootout with Fingo soldiers. Early Life Sandile, born in 1820 at Burns Hill, belonged to the Ngrika clan of the Kosa people. When he was young, his father Ngrika passed away and his brother Makoma served as regent until 1872 when Sandile became king. Despite being born with a physical challenge of one leg shorter than the other, Sandile played a significant role in the frontier wars. The Klosa nation was divided between the Kaleka in the east ruled by Sarhili and Sandile's Rarabe in the west. Nevertheless, Sarhili, also known as Kreli, acted as paramount king of all the Klosa people. The Seventh Frontier War 1846 to 1847 The Seventh Frontier War was also known as the War of the Axe or Amatola War background to the war. The tension between farmers and marauders spanning both sides of the frontier had been brewing due to the aftermath of a previous conflict. The Tlosa people facing the harsh effects of a severe drought resorted to cattle raids across the frontier as a means of survival. Adding to this unrest, the government planned to return the land captured in the previous war to the Tlosa. However, a significant number of Eastern Cape settlers, vocal through the Grahamstown Journal, expressed their agitation and desire to annex and settle this particular territory. The war between the British and the Tlosa was sparked by a seemingly minor dispute over a raid. It began when Tlosa raiders attacked and killed a Khoikhoi escort who was transporting a manacled Tlosa thief to be tried for theft. Sandile, the Tlosa leader, refused to surrender the murderer, leading to the outbreak of war in March 1846. Alongside British forces, various groups of mixed burger forces consisting mainly of Khoi, Fengu and Boer commanders were recruited locally to fight on the side of the British under the leadership of Andris Stockenstrom. In the war, Sandile's Ngeka tribe received support from portions of the Ndlambe and Tembu tribes. Importantly, the Tlosa had a significant numerical advantage, outnumbering the colonials by over 10 times, and their use of modern firearms made them more effective in battle against the British. Sandile's Initial Victories during the conflict between Sandile's forces and the British in 1846, Sandile's forces achieved early success by capturing a three-mile-long wagon train that was not defended, taking British supplies. As the British fell back, Sandile's forces advanced across the border, causing the British to abandon their outposts. However, the locum Fengu people put up successful resistance against the larger Tlosa forces defending their villages. On the 28th of May, 8,000 of Sandile's men attacked the British garrison of Fort Petty, but eventually retreated after a prolonged shootout with British and Fingo troops. The Tlosa's advance on Grahamstown was slowed when a significant Lambe Tlosa army was defeated a few miles from Fort Petty. Both sides were also challenged by a drought at this time. Involvement of the Cape Burger Commandos in the face of desperation, the British sought the assistance of Stockenstrom and the local Cape Burger forces. These forces, consisting of fast-moving commandos, possessed extensive knowledge of the local terrain and proved to be formidable opponents for Sandile's army. Their strategic prowess led to a series of defeats for Sandile. Encouraged by these victories, the commandos ventured deep into the heartland of the Transkei Tlosa region, ultimately reaching the village of King Sarhili himself, the ruler of all Tlosa. Through negotiations with King Sarili, an overarching treaty was established, aiming to bring peace to all closer communities. Later Stages of the War 
The conflict between the local burghers and the British Imperial Army, coupled with the effects of drought, led to the withdrawal of Stockenstrom's commanders from the war. This left both the British and the Closer already struggling with starvation and fever to engage in a prolonged war of attrition. The situation was further aggravated by the use of scorched earth tactics employed by both sides. As the armies weakened, the conflict turned into a series of small scale and brutal retaliations. Specifically, a violent outbreak occurred when the Nika tribesmen were accused of stealing four goats from the neighboring Katrafir settlement, sparking further tensions and bloodshed. Sandile, despite his physical disability, gained respect for evading the British during their intensive searches on the Amatola forests. However, the war persisted until Sandile was eventually captured during negotiations and taken to Grahamstown. Although he was later released, other Tlosa chiefs gradually surrendered. On the 23rd of December 1847, the Kiskama to Upper K region was incorporated in the British Kafraria colony with King Williamstown as its capital. The Eighth Frontier War, which lasted from 1850 to 1853, the conflict referred to as Mlanjeni's War. During this war, wounded Tlosa soldiers were treated by a spiritual leader named Mlanjeni. He claimed to possess supernatural powers that would protect the Tlosa from the bullets of the colonial forces. Initial Victories In December 1850, Governor Sir Harry Smith travelled to British Kafraria to meet with the prominent chiefs, perceiving them responsible for the unrest caused by Mlanjeni's preaching. Sandile, one of the chiefs, refused to attend a meeting outside Fort Cox due to his distrust in Governor Smith's motives. Consequently, Smith ordered Sandile's deposition, declaring him a fugitive. On the 24th of December, a British detachment sent to arrest Sandile was ambushed by Tlosa soldiers in the Buma Pass. The British party had to retreat to Fort White under heavy fire. The Tlosa forces, along with half Khoi, half Tlosa, chief named Hermanus Matruis, and the Katrafir Khoikhoi, joined in a massive uprising, burning British military villages along the frontier and capturing the post at Line drift setbacks. After achieving some early victories, the Tlosa people faced a series of setbacks in their struggle. Their forces were unsuccessful in their attempts to capture Fort White and Fort Hare as they were repulsed in separate attacks on these important strongholds. Additionally, on January the 7th, Hermanus, a key leader in the Tlosa, led an offensive against the town of Fort Beaufort, which was defended by a small group of soldiers and local volunteers. Unfortunately, the attack was unsuccessful and resulted in the death of Hermanus. Involvement of the local Cape Commandos In January, the Imperial forces received support from the Cape Colony, strengthening their forces. Led by Colonel Mackinnon, they successfully advanced north from King Williamstown to provide much-needed supplies to the besieged garrisons of Fort White, Fort Cox and Fort Hare. They managed to expel the remaining rebel forces, now under the leadership of Willem Eithalder from Fort Armstrong, and pushed them westward towards the Amatola Mountains. However, insurgents led by Mankoma, the brother of Sandile, took refuge in the heavily forest at Waterkloof and held their position for a significant period of time, posing further challenges for the Imperial troops. Aftermath and cattle killing The Eighth Frontier War, part of the Tlosa Wars, was a particularly harsh and prolonged conflict lasting over two years. It culminated in the complete subjugation of the Siskei Tlosa. Following the war, the Tlosa people, facing desperation, turned to a millennialist movement led by Prophetess Nom Ngawuse between 1856 and 1858. This movement prompted the Tlosa to destroy their own means of sustenance, believing it would bring supernatural salvation. The resulting famine primarily affected the Kareka on the side of the Kay River, but also caused hardship among Sandile's people, resulting in a wave of impoverished refugees. However, after 1858, hostilities diminished and peace returned to the frontier, and the frontier saw over a decade of relative quiet. During this period, the Cape Colony introduced representative and responsible government, aiming to create a more inclusive political system through the Cape Qualified Franchise, which granted voting rights to a broader group of individuals. The Ninth Frontier War from 1877 to 1879 a series of devastating droughts affected the Transkei region in South Africa. These droughts, which started in 1875 in Kalekaland and spread to other parts of the Transkei, Basutoland and the Cape Colony-controlled Suskei, had severe consequences. Historian de Kivet attributed the heat of the droughts to ignite tensions that eventually led to conflicts in the region. The severity of the droughts reached its peak in 1877, causing ethnic tensions to escalate, particularly between the Mfengu, 
Tembu and Kaleka Tosa communities. The Ninth War was also known as the Mfengu Kaleka War, took place outside the Cape Colony's frontier in neighboring Transkei. It began with the supposed harassment of the Mfengu Fingu people by Sarhili's Kaleka Tosa, which escalated from a bar fight into inter-tribal violence. The Cape Colony, being traditional allies of the Fengu, became involved in the conflict. The British governor saw an opportunity to annex the independent Tosa state of Kaleka land and joined the war. That Kaleka then called upon Sandile, who had previously been granted land in the British Kafraria, to join the conflict. Despite the advice of his councillors and chiefs, Sandile's younger generation of warriors were persuaded to support the Kaleka cause. This decision ultimately led to his downfall. Following a fierce conflict, the armies of the Finger and the Cape Colony emerged triumphant. Sandile met his demise in a shootout with Fingo soldiers in 1878. As a result, all remaining closer territory was absorbed into the Cape Colony. His death Sandile, the prominent Tlosa leader, met his tragic end on the 29th of May 1878 after sustaining grave injuries during a confrontation with Fengu troops. The Fengu, a Tlosa speaking nation and longtime victims of Tlaleka Tlosa oppression, had allied themselves with the Cape Colony. Sandile's death occurred a few days after the incident and his body was transported to a nearby military camp. Revered by this time, Sandile received a grand military funeral with Fengu pallbearers carrying his his body on eight rifles. His final resting place lies approximately 16 kilometers from Stutterheim, near the Amatola Mountains, where he valiantly fought in numerous battles. Interestingly, his grave is adjacent to British soldiers A. Dix and F. Hiller, who also perished in the same war. A memorial plaque erected at the gravesite in 1941 reads as follows. Sandile, chief of the Gaikas, born about 1820, killed in the Ninth Kafir War, 1877-1878, and buried here on the 9th of the 6th, 1878. Recent excavations overseen by the local Tlosa community have confirmed the body's identity and dispelled centuries-old rumors that Sandile was posthumously decapitated. He was survived by his daughter, Emma Sandile, who later became a landowner in the Cape Colony. If you enjoy this channel and you'd like to support more content like this, because all contributions are greatly appreciated, please check out the Patreon link in the description below.